today is the sixth Sunday after uh, Pentecost. We are again in Asheville and Santa Fe, those of are listening. And uh, the epistle for the sixth Sunday is taken from St. Paul's of the Romans, chapter six. Brethren, all who are baptized, all we are baptized in Christ Jesus are baptized in his death. We are buried together with him by baptism unto death, that as Christ is risen from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we also may walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin may be destroyed, and that we may serve sin no longer. For he that is dead is justified from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall live also together with Christ. Knowing that Christ, rising again from the dead, dieth now no more. Death shall no more have dominion over him. For in that he died to sin, he died once. And that he liveth, he liveth unto God. So do you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God, Christ Jesus our Lord. The Gospel. And we go to St. Mark chapter 8. At that time, when there was a great multitude with Jesus, and they had nothing to eat, calling his disciples together, he said to them, I have compassion on the multitude, for behold, they have now been with me three days, and having nothing to eat, and, and if I shall send them away fasting to their home, they will faint in the way. For some of them came from afar off. And his disciples answered him, From whence can anyone fill them here with bread in the wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves have ye? Who said, Seven. And he commanded the people to sit down on the ground. And taking the seven loaves, giving thanks, he broke and gave it to his disciples, who sat before the people. And they had a few little fishes. And he blessed them and commanded them to be set before them. And they did eat, and were filled, and they took up with that which was left from the fragments, seven baskets. And they that had eaten were about four thousand, and he sent them away. Those were the words of these. Holy Later, he's going to feed 5,000. So he feeds 4,000 a day, and another day he's going to feed 5,000. And of course, the famous day is when he feeded the 5,000, which is found in the Gospel of St. Luke, John, chapter 6. And after that day, he announces that they must eat his flesh and drink his blood. But today he feeds the 4,000. And before he feeds them, he's going to instruct his apostles in one of the duties and responsibilities of the church. And so that this day is a little different than the next time. And so he says, the people are with him. At that time, when they were a great multitude with Jesus, and they had nothing to eat, calling his disciples together, he said to them, I have compassion on the, on the multitude, for behold, they now have been with me three days and have nothing to eat. He's teaching his apostles. I have compassion on the multitude because they have nothing to eat. So one of the responsibilities of our Holy Mother, the church, is to have compassion on the multitude. Remember that St. Paul, he said very clearly, there was a teaching of the Old Testament and also the teaching of the New. And that is, the faithful are supposed to provide food and shelter for the priest. And the way in which you give money to God, see, there's, there's, there was much of the Jewish way of giving money to God. They said that, that, that they have a joke in which they say the Protestant minister threw money in the, in the, in, in the, uh, up in the air and what landed in the middle of the circle went to God. Catholic priest threw money in the air, went outside the circle, went to God. Well, the Jewish rabbi threw the money in the air, and then he picked all the money up and said, whatever God wants, he keeps. So if God wants the money, he can keep it. We all know that how do you give money to God? You give money that's given to God must be given to a man. Money that's given to God must be given materially to a man. So you have a great obligation as Catholics to give money to the priest. 
You have a great obligation to feed the priest, a great obligation to find shelter for the priest, a great obligation to take care of the priest. And the priest knows this very well. Part of our training. You're supposed to be taken care of by you. So it's part of our training. So the priest, the priest is supposed to be taken care of by the people. And that actually says in the Old Testament. Remember, there were 12 tribes of Israel. And one of the tribes was the tribe of Levi. And when God divided the Israel up, he divided it into 11 parts. He didn't divide it into 12 parts. He divided it into 11 parts, and he gave one part to every one of the tribes. But Levi, he did not give a single part. He also told each of the tribes, stay in your own place. Stay in your own place. But Levi could go anywhere, and Levi had to be everywhere. Because the Levites were the priests. Therefore, the priests had to be in all the 11 different kingdoms, 11 different spots, 11 different counties in Israel. They had to be in the 11 different counties, and there they took care of the prayer, they took care of the worship, they took care of the education of the people and the things of God. In return, the people are supposed to take care of the priests. Our Lord Jesus Christ also says in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 10, that the priests go out to every city, they take the food, but they put it at the table, eat whatever they set at the table for you. And when you go to each city, stay in one house, and so stay in a thousand houses. And that when that when and remember that the laborer is worthy of his hire. So you're supposed to contribute to the support of the church. And you are supposed to contribute to the support of the church. It's how, it is how you give worship to God. You must give worship to God by giving money to the church and by supporting the priests. And contribute to the support of the church, and this way you give money to God. You don't just throw the money in the air, whatever God wants, he keeps. But you have to actually give out the money to the priests to the church. So now our Lord Jesus Christ is in the desert. And they have been in the desert for three days. And the people are very hungry. And Christ gathers together his disciples. And he said, you know that you're going to be priests of the New Testament. It is true that a priest is supposed to be taken care of by the people. Remember St. Paul talks about it. He says, you're supposed to take care of me. But did I ask any of you for money? No, I didn't, says St. Paul. I worked in making tents. And I, and I raised my own money to survive, and I didn't ask you for any help. Even though I should, I had the right to, and you were supposed to provide for me. St. Paul mentions that in his epistle. But what about, the, what about the New Testament priest? We are priests of God. We are supposed to be supported by the people. And it is a responsibility of the people to support the priest. And when the people support the priest, they're giving money to God. They're fulfilling their obligation of worship towards God. But then our Lord gathers together his disciples. There's 12 apostles. And he says, I have had compassion upon the multitude. Because they have been with me for three days and they have nothing to eat. We cannot send them back fainting in the way. And he's teaching the apostles one of the duties of the church. In the New Testament, things are different than the Old Testament. Well, it is true that the people must still support the church. This is, the, this is the testament of charity. Remember when our Lord Jesus Christ, on Holy Thursday night, what did he say to his apostles? Mandatum novum do vobis. I give you a new commandment. And the new commandment is that you love one another as I have loved you. And before he said that, he went to his apostles and he said, You call me master, and you say well, for so I am. I am your master. But, as I am about to wash your feet... As I am about to serve you, you must serve also. Because the priest of the New Testament cannot be like the priest of the Old Testament, nor can he be like the priest of the pagans, who lord it over the people and gather only things unto themselves. Therefore, he is teaching his disciples, he's teaching his apostles. He gathered them together and said, I have had compassion upon the multitudes. They cannot go home starving. You must understand, when you become a priest of the New Testament, and you build a church, you will make sure that you take care of the needs of your people. Archie Lefebvre, for instance, a founder of our society, St. Pius X, when he built missions in Africa, he built, there was a bridge, there was a river that had no bridge, he built a bridge across the river. He was an electrician, and he built the first, he established electricity in the village where he was. And he made it possible for people, to, for men to be able to go to work. Some of our missionaries in India will work on making sure that there's a way for the men to be able to survive, to go and get their fish and so on, the fishermen to go out and catch fish. Now the fact is that we must have compassion upon the multitude, that the priest of the New Testament is not only about worshiping at the altar, he's not only about teaching the people 
how to pray. The Jesuit missionaries, when they went to South America, they taught them how to fight because they were being persecuted by the Portuguese. And so the Jesuit brothers said, the Portuguese can use these wicked Portuguese can use a sword, you can use a sword. They can use a gun, you can use a gun. And I'm going to teach you how to use it, and I'm going to teach you the tactics so that you will defend yourself against the Portuguese. And also, you people are starving. We're going to teach you how to farm. We're going to teach you how to live in a society where you can where you can have an ordered society. We're going to teach you how to buy and sell. We're going to teach you about society, how men can live in peace in society. And so the priest taught how one man can make shoes and another man can grow food. And the man that grows food, he gives his food to the man with shoes. And the man that has shoes gives his shoes to the man that has food. And he tells him how to do it in an ordered and proper manner. So the priest is not only about praising Jesus. He is not only about mass. He is about getting souls to heaven. And souls go to heaven. They not only need to praise God. They also need to eat. Therefore, he should have compassion on the crowd. He gathered the disciples, and like good disciples, he said, I have compassion on the crowd. And, then, and the good apostles said, we feel sorry for him too. But it's not our problem. It's their problem. I, hope, I wish him the best. Well, you need to do something to help them. Well, how are we going to be able to help them? There's only seven baskets, seven loaves of bread here. And how are we going to feed them? And then Christ you know, commanded them to come back and make the people to sit down and to distribute to them. We see this in the lives of the saints everywhere. Whenever there is a saint, he only distributes more than he has. When Father Raphael is Benedictine, Breeze, his, his uncle, was, was a uh, father, his name after his, his great uncle, who was a bishop in Mexico in the time of the persecution in the 1930s, in the time of the Gusteros. And he didn't, he was a Mexican, so he didn't like bread. They have tortillas. So he did not multiply bread. But one of the miracles of Bishop Raphael, he always used to carry candy in his pocket. He always had candy. And whenever the children would come, he would hand out candy. And one particular day, he had his pocket with a few candies in it. And about three or four hundred children came. They all wanted candy. And he pulled out candy, 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 and he pulled out candy. And they came back for seconds, and he pulled out candy, and he pulled out candy. And they never ran out of candy. You know, the multiplication of candy. <laughs> His body is incorrupt. He was martyred for our faith. <clears throat> and he wasn't good at multiplying bread, but he could multiply candy. <laughs> and so that we would, so that what is the spirit of the church? He is teaching his priests. Do you think you're a priest? Do you think you're a follower of God? Do you think you're doing your duty because you said mass? Do you think you're doing your duty because you taught catechism? You must do these things, and you must teach the people about these things. But you have to do something else. And the old Mexican missionaries, back 500 years ago, they had a problem. The women were going to church, and the children were going to church, but the men weren't because they were busy. The farmers went out to the fields, and the fishermen came in from the sea. And so the priest said, all right, we're going to do this in the old-fashioned Jesuit way. They got permission from Rome to have Mass in the early morning. It wasn't allowed at that time to say Mass in the early morning. <clears throat> so they got permission from Rome to say Mass at 5 o'clock in the morning. And they had, <clears throat> and they had the Manganitas, or the Misa de Gallio, the Mass of the, the, mass of the, uh, uh, the, mass of the Cock Crow. And in the early morning, they said, we're going to do these in the nine days before Christmas. So the priest went out, and they one priest, a whole set of priests, they went to the seashore, and, the, and the, the fishermen were coming in from catching fish all night. Others went to the farmers who were getting up, they were ready to go out in the field. And they said, you farmers, get your behind in church before you go out in the field. And you fishermen, you can't go to bed yet, get your behind in church. For the next nine days, you're going to be in church. We're not going to do that. Yes, you are. You're going to catechism. And you're going to Mass at 4 o'clock in the morning before you go to bed, because we never see you at Mass otherwise. We're not going to do that. Yes, you are, because afterwards we're going to have a party. Oh, okay, we'll come. And so they came. And then they had a big feast after each one of those days. And they taught them the catechism. They taught them the catechism. That's when they invented something called the piñata. The piñata was invented by the Catholic priests in the 1500s. And they taught little children that the devil is very bad. And he has seven horns. And so they made an a, a, 
a, a, a, an instrument of seven horns, and it had seven horns on it. Real pinata should have seven horns. And these seven horns are the seven capital sins. And they hid candy inside the heaven for seven, and then inside the corn. And they said, you want to, you do like the devil? No, we don't like the devil. Well, you got to beat up the devil. So they made him take a stick and beat the devil and beat the devil. And sure enough, when it broke open, there was candy. And they taught them, you must drive out the devil. When you drive out the devil, you will receive candy. You will receive blessings. But they not only said spiritual things, they taught them how to fish. They taught them how to farm. They taught them how to interact with each other in business. The priest went out and blessed the fields. He went out and blessed the, he blessed the cattle. And he blessed the, the farm equipment. And he blessed all the things that they may seem might be used in justice and used for God. And that the priest is not only to do spiritual things. He is to watch over and have compassion upon the crowd because they are hungry. Especially when there is not enough to eat. Especially when they are fainting in the way. And therefore, our Lord said to his disciples, you must have compassion upon the crowd. The priests of God must have compassion upon the crowd. While it is true, the crowd must take care of the priest, and it is still a responsibility. The priest does not worry about these things. He has confidence in divine providence, and he's supposed to teach the people confidence in divine providence, and so he taught them, and he made them bread. A little bit later, he had to feed 5,000. Here's where we learn that we human beings are what's called boneheads. Every single day what happens? We say to our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread. Every day our Lord gives us our daily bread. We read about the days of the Israelites. What did they do when they traveled in the desert? And manna came down every day. And if anybody stored the manna, it went bad. Quail were, came every day, the birds of there called quail. And they killed birds, and they ate the quail, and they ate the manna every single day. But there was never enough for two days, and only enough for that day, and then it disappeared. And the next day, more manna and more quail. And the next day, more manna and more quail. And they survived 40 years in the deserts. Meanwhile, our Lord, he did the miracle of the 4,000. He fed the 4,000. The disciples... Listen to him. And they distributed the bread. And like Bishop Raphael, they handed out the bread, and handed out the bread, and handed out the bread, and they did not run out. And when they finished handing out the bread, they everybody ate, and they wanted seconds, and they gave them seconds, and they all ate. And then they came back, and they gathered together seven baskets. There were seven pieces of bread. And at the end, there were seven baskets of bread. Whenever our Lord provides for us, he always provides more than enough. It is God who provides the rain. We cannot make it rain. He knows how to do that. He is the one that makes us grow. He is the one that makes the plants grow. And so now we come to the 5,000. A little bit later, there was 5,000 inside of the desert. And by now, the apostles should know. We've seen this before. Our Lord Jesus Christ has fed 4,000. He fed them with seven baskets. He asked us, and we, all, we told him, Lord, how are we going to get enough money to go into town, which is a long ways anyway, and buy all the bread and, and bring it back? But our Lord said, I'm going to feed this crowd. Last time it was 4,000. This time it's 5,000. Uh, he could do 4,000. I don't know if he could do five. It's a lot. He could, well, he could do one. He could do 4,000. He could do a million. Every single person that's fed is fed by God. And the apostles should have realized he fed the 4,000. He fed them by, by what? Seven baskets, seven pieces of bread. Here we got five barley loaves and two fishes the second time around. Maybe he can multiply the five barley loaves. Maybe he can multiply the two fishes. Why can't he do that? But they didn't remember. They didn't remember. And our Lord Jesus Christ, it says in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, he asked them to try and fill it. When should we buy bread? Remember, Philip, you're the one last time that said it was going to cost a lot of money to buy bread. And you're the one that I told to hand out the bread. you remember that? He didn't remember. He couldn't remember about the bread being handed out by God, probably just a few weeks earlier. It's like seminary in memory. You remember we had on task last week? No. You remember we were supposed to know? No. They can't remember anything because they're idiots. But the fact is that the memory is a problem. He couldn't remember. It's probably the week before when he fed 4,000. Is this ringing a bell? We fed 4,000, now we're going to feed 5,000. 
Yeah, but that was seven loaves of bread. This is five barley loaves. That was wheat loaves. This is barley. I don't know if we could do barley. And there's only two fishes. How on earth can you multiply two fishes? I can understand the wheat loaves, but not the barley loaves. I can understand that these two fish, there may be more fish, but not these two fishes. I don't get it. I don't think you can do it. They couldn't remember, but you know what they did remember? They remembered how much it cost. They remembered how much it cost. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, how are we going to provide for these people? And they said, it's going to be expensive. And they provided them, it didn't cost anything. Now we come a year later, or a week later, we don't know how long it was, not that much later. And now we're going to feed 5,000. And what do they say? A hundred penny worth is not enough. It's going to cost a lot of money to buy this bread, and we don't have enough money. And our Lord Jesus Christ is trying to teach his followers, don't have confidence in money. And that you must have confidence in something else. God will provide. He will provide the barley loaves. He will provide the fishes. He will provide the means. And then we must have compassion on the crowd. We're heading into a crisis now. As the world is getting more and more a wicked place, more and more people are losing their jobs, more and more difficulties are around the corner. We're heading more and more and more towards a communist world. It's going to be very important that there be compassion upon the crowd. And that our Lord is just going to test his disciples. Do you have compassion on the crowd? We've got to help those that are in need. Help those that are poor. Help those that are struggling. This is everywhere the case in the New Testament priesthood. Always, always, always. And even pagans know priests are supposed to help the poor. Even pagans know that. And yet we also know that people are supposed to support the priest. But that's only one half of the occasion. The priest must also have compassion upon the crowd. And not only that, all Catholics are supposed to have compassion upon their neighbors. And this is one of the problems that we have. And Christ fed the 4,000. After he fed them, he blessed them and he sent them on their way. So he never sends someone home empty-handed. He must receive the faith, but he must also receive gifts. And so therefore, we, must, we, we ask the grace to be able to imitate our Lord in the seat of the 4,000. When he fed the 5,000, he was showing his power. And then he was also showing them that he could create, multiply the 5,000. They must believe in him. So the next day when he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood, they would believe in him. But after he fed the 5,000, the next day he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. And they all said he was a cannibal and they all left him. So many left him that our Lord said, will you leave me also? They were disgusted with Christ saying, eat my flesh and drink my blood. The miracle that had just happened before of feeding the 5,000 did not impress them. And so also the, the, the Christ teaches his priests, you must make sure your duty is to go out and help others. But don't expect it to bring miraculous conversions. Don't expect it to help everyone to come back to Christ. Because I fed 5,000 and I formed a great miracle and everyone was filled to the brim and they were totally stuffed and the next day they all abandoned me. You must do these things because Christ does them. You must do these things because it's in the imitation of our Lord and the Spirit of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. And then God will bring the conversions in his own time. And these things are done in order that we imitate Christ who gave us everything that we have. Let us have compassion not only in the spiritual things, but also in the material things. And closing up, close it up, God bless you all. Thank you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.